Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So in the last video I did about uh, connecting Azure SQL using MSI for development, I, I read your comments and it said that you guys want, as you can see here, you guys want to do it also with uh, local instead of using Azure for development. So uh, let's get into how to change our code that we did for uh, having it in Azure into having a local DB and how to create a local DB in Visual Studio. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, open our project. And in here, we're gonna look at what I have changed. So first I went in here and commented out the stuff we were doing to get tokens. This is only needed if you're doing Azure. If not, you just pass the options and I change our startup. Instead of just being a simple add DB context, we pass everything in here. So we set the options to use SQL server and we get the connection string that I will show how we modified it and then provider options, uh, I add the enable retry on failure. This is just a thing that you should always add. It just makes it more reliant when you're connecting to SQL try in case there's some transient uh, networking error. I also changed from add DB context to add DB context pool. So this basically will have a, a pool of resources that it can pick up from and start the connection instead of st having to start from new each time. Uh, it's something that just makes it more efficient. And now let's get into how to create the actual database. So we're gonna go here and connect, we're gonna add connect to database. And in here, uh, we're gonna make sure that we selected Microsoft SQL Server database file. We're gonna do browse. And I like having in my development folder, I have a folder with all my databases and it's just cleaner to have it that way and also it saves you a little bit of copy pasting in a second you'll see so let's just call this one email db and we're gonna save it and i'm just gonna copy this and we're gonna do okay and they'll give us an error saying like hey like well it's not an error and information saying like hey this doesn't exist would you like to create it and we're gonna say yes so as we can see here, it created our new database and we'll expand the tables and it has no information. So we're gonna go to app settings. And as you can see here, I kind of like left the connection, but I changed it to Azure, uh, the last one, in case someone wants to, as always, they, all this code is in GitHub. So if you wanna go download the code and stuff, you just have to uncomment what I said, I commented out, comment that out, what I said I added and it'll work. And in here I have a local DB attached DB file name, and this is the path to my file. Of course, yours is gonna be different. So in here, I just have to change the name to, to match my new one. So it's still in the same folder. That's what I said, I keep all in the same folder. It makes it easier with connection strings. And I just changed the file name. So now that I have this, I already created the migrations. To see how to do all that, just check out the other video. I'm gonna link it down below and up in the card. So like, make sure to check it out. But in here, we just have to do an update database. And it will use the migrations that already exist in here. So we can see down here on the right, there is a bunch of migrations. And it'll start the build. And it'll add the tables. And then it's done. So if we see here, now if we refresh, there's going to be two tables. There's going to be the person table that is the one that we use, sorry, the people table. That if we look at it, show table data, it's going to be empty. And then there's a EF migration history. So we, that one is just like a management that uh, EF uses to kind of like keep track of which migrations have been applied to this database. And in case there's more migrations and stuff, when you do update database, it'll go and add, add them there. So in here we can see the table and it's all empty because it's a brand new table that we just created. So if we go ahead and run our amazing app that we created a year ago and we go to add user, we can populate fake DB, which is a button we created last time. And now there is more users. And if we look here and we update it, we can see the same value. So that's how you move from Azure back into local DB and that's how you create a local DB using Visual Studio. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.